happiness. I'm set, setting up snares and booby traps trying to catch this butterfly. And I realize that I'm trying to catch something that I can't control. I'm trying to catch something that isn't as rigid as an equation, that isn't math. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Kendrick. <laughs> it's more, it's, it's more difficult to explain than math. It's, it's not so set. It's constantly changing, just like life is constantly changing, just like we are constantly changing. And I heard this quote actually from my best friend Audrey Dubar that happiness is not a destination but a direction. And I realized that I was trying to make it a destination by trying to find this set equation of 30 minutes of yoga plus meditation plus two best friends equals happiness. And it turns out this does not exist. Um, but there is one story that Dr. McCollum told me about letting go of control that I feel is really powerful. So she was, she was about to get her treatment, and this was the sixth one, so this was the halfway point for her. And so she's a really goal-oriented person, so she's like, okay, I'm halfway there, I'm halfway through treatment. And they have to get their blood drawn every time before they get chemo to see if they are healthy enough to take it. And her doctor came to her and said, I'm sorry, Linnell, you're not healthy enough to get chemo today. And she grabbed the doctor's arm and was like, no, no, this is the sixth one. This is the halfway mark. I have to get my treatment. And then he, he touches her shoulder and he says, will you please trust me? We will get through this. And that's when Dr. McCollum said, her shoulders slumped and she said, tears just started coming down her cheek. And her shoulders didn't slump in defeat. She said they slumped in surrender because she can't control that she had cancer. Things happen in life that we can't control. So when she surrendered, actually at that point, she started getting better. Nothing changed in her treatment. She started being able to eat again and she just started getting better. The thing that changed was her mindset. It was all about letting go of control. And so that kind of shows how much power our thoughts actually have on our life. And so I kind of wanted to explain this to emphasize that fact. And this is the cognitive behavioral therapy triangle. And like I said, events happen. You get, you get sick, you get in a car accident. Things happen and you can't control that. What we can control is your thoughts which ultimately controls your feelings and your behaviors. So say you get a bad grade on a test, and your thoughts are, well, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I stink at school. So then your feelings are gonna be, you're gonna feel sad, you're gonna feel worthless. And so your behavior might be, you drop out of school, because you figured that you're stupid, so you don't wanna continue on this path. And then your thoughts about dropping out of school, well, you're like, well, now I'm a failure on life because I dropped out of high school. And then it keeps going on and on and on, and it can really lead into a terrible, terrible spiral down. But if you had changed that thought, same event, you get a bad grade. But if you had changed the initial thought that, okay, I did bad, but next time I'll study more. And so then your thoughts may be still dis disappointed, but not nearly as drastic as the first one. And so then your behaviors might be so... Maybe next time you study more, maybe you do test corrections. But you see how it completely, just your thoughts completely change the outcome of your life. So this might sound confusing and kind of contradicting to the thing I said about letting go of control. So I want to clarify. What I mean by letting go of control is letting go of things that are out of our control, like getting hurt and like getting cancer or something similar to that. But what I mean that we can control things, like our thoughts, we can control internal things. And I believe that there is no happiness set equation, but I believe I can, we can use all those techniques that I gave you to improve our happiness. And some of them might work for you and some of them might not, because everyone is different. But those are, those are just the ones that I chose to emphasize. But, but basically, what kind of summarizes what I'm trying to say is the serenity prayer. Heard it at the AA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So like I said, some things we cannot change, but some things we can. We can change internal things, but we cannot change external things.
Thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, my podcast actually comes out on May 31st, which is this coming Monday on iTunes. You can search The Happiness Equation or Amy's Label. And I wanted to say special thanks to all my collaborators and interviews, Mr. Dunbar and Ms. Perry and Ms. Bailey. And um, I wouldn't have been able to create this project without you guys, and I would not be where I am right now on my own path to happiness if it weren't for you guys. So thank you. Questions, and we're going to start out with just the panel asking, and then when you've run out of things to ask, Amy, we can open it up to everyone. I'll go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was really, really well done, very powerful, and very moving, and uh, excellent, very well uh, performed by you. One thing that sort of came that leaped out at me is the fact that there is no you know, set equation per se, but there are several sort of similar guidelines I think we heard throughout the podcast. There's things like acceptance and letting go. And I guess when did you figure out maybe there's not an equation, but there's more of, you know, still rules or guidelines that people could try to follow? Um, I think it was from my, in, my initial research that I, when I tried to find the equation, a lot of I picked out similar things from each article that said, like, this worked for me and this worked for me. But then, like, a lot of them weren't mentioned in other articles. And so I just, I kind of figured out that, like I said, that happiness is unique. And yes, we can use some of the sim similar characteristics. And some of these, um, a lot of people can use, but not all people can use. Does that answer your question? No. Um, I had sort of a process question, I guess. It was the, um, well, overall, really interesting and yeah. well presented. Um, and the people that you interviewed in particular shared such a broad range of strategies um, that all complemented each other and sort of fit together. But I was wondering, how did you find those people and decide who to interview? And had you um, done some research first that indicated that these were certain strategies and then decided to go find people who did those things? Or was it just a chance that they represented such a good range of strategies? I had actually found, during my research, I actually found the techniques that I liked the best kind of, and that I found that were more, um, more common in the articles that I read. And then that's when I kind of um, searched for people that I thought would kind of have similar, would be able to talk about those different things. <laughs> I thought that you did an excellent job, and I liked the um, I liked seeing um, the humanity of it as well as the research. I thought you did a really good job of blending those, and um, I especially liked that you introduced yourself as an introvert, but really went about this presentation <laughs> as somebody who can and does present. I thought that was excellent. Um, one of my questions that I jotted down, why um, why did we see so many women as your interviewees? You know, I actually was talking to Ms. Bailey about that yesterday. I, was like, I just realized these are all women. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know if I did that self-consciously, but um, I actually had, um, for my mentor, I had a podcast mentor, and then I kind of had a psychologist mentor, but we only met once, so I didn't really consider a mentor. But, he was a male, and he helped out a lot to mm -hmm. <laughs> figure out what step, what I really wanted to research. He was, I met him like in the beginning of the year, but I don't, I didn't know why. So all of them. Maybe I feel more comfortable finding them. But. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, uh, what was the reaction like with the people at the AA meeting? <laughs> did, they, did they feel kind of skittish about having someone in, in their midst that? Um. I think maybe they thought I was in denial about being an alcoholic. Because <laughs> they assume all the people that go are alcoholics, but a lot of them are at different stages. Some of them are seriously into their alcoholism. Some of them have been uh, sober for many years. And so I think they just assumed I was in denial. <laughs> I was like, do I look old enough to be an alcoholic? I guess it doesn't matter what age. <laughs> okay, so Amy, what... 
What tools did you use to go out and, and collect these these interviews? Okay. Was it the same thing, or was I noticed a little bit of variance in the audio quality on a couple of clips? Actually, Annie's the, the fuzzy sound was for air conditioning. <laughs> But I used uh, mostly an iTouch, and then I also recorded a lot of them on Skype using a call recorder. And so that's mainly how I got it. Why did you choose the subject that you chose for your research project? How did you choose happiness as your subject? Well, like, um, I am getting old, well, not old, old, <laughs> but I'm becoming, I'm an adult now, I guess, technically. It feels weird to say that out loud. <laughs> and so I didn't want to live an unhappy life. And I feel like now that I know about all this stuff, now I can really change it and change my whole entire life. And so, I don't know, I just I just wanted to be a happier person. <laughs> Have you put any of those things into practice? Yoga, self-compassion, meditation? I'm working on it. <laughs> They're kind of hard to do. <laughs> Did, did any of the people that you interviewed talk about that aspect of it, that a lot of this is easier said than done? Yes, actually, almost all of them said that, actually. And Dr. McCollins would tell her, her clients, like, we can do this, but I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be easy, but we can do this. And so that's basically kind of, I mean, happiness is hard, and it's complex, and it's, it's, it's not always easy to be a happy person. And so... Uh, it is difficult, but I think it's worth it in the end <laughs> to be that old smiling lady. We've got a couple student questions. The questions that you like that you asked the your interviewers, how did you come up with those questions? Like did you base it off of what they did or what like or were those like just basic questions that you wanted to ask? It was kind of based off what they did and also what I wanted to kind of learn. <laughs> Yeah, I just researched a whole bunch about them, kind of stalked them, <laughs> not really <laughs> stalking, <laughs> but researched them, and then I just kind of came up with questions that I thought would suit their profession. Okay. Open it up, we have time for like two or three questions from everyone. Um, <clears throat> uh, having gone through this, I think we've spoken before and you were talking about potentially following a career and something similar, is that correct? Uh, I have not decided on what career I want, okay. but psychology is definitely something I'm interested in. <laughs> okay. Um, having gone through this and having uh, having done this research, um, do you feel like you would be qualified in any way? Being a college freshman, um, you're going to come in contact with a lot of other students who are going to be experiencing a lot of issues, a lot of psychological issues, a lot of mental health issues. Do you think that, like this, this research will help you to feel um, that you can be helpful to them? I think so. I think I learned part of, I did part of this project for me, but I also did it for other people, like the lady suffering in the AA. I just know that there's a lot of people suffering out there and that you don't know, and so that's why I wanted to kind of learn these techniques so that I could help other people. And I'm hoping that in college, because I know a lot of people, a lot of people my age don't know about this stuff. A lot of people I mean, your age don't know about this stuff. Not that you're old, Mr. <laughs> don't know about this stuff. And so I feel like now that I know this stuff, I can, I can really help people. That's a good place to stop. Congratulations. Amy.